Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Construction Club Cost Estimating Combined uh, Session. And we are thankful that Marty McIntyre came all the way from Chicago via St. Louis to come be with us. And Mark came all the way from Fishers, uh, north of uh, Indiana, Indianapolis in Indiana. So what I do <clears throat> is really on the marketing side. I spend all of the, my time talking to people about how to design with the product, how to use the product, um, where it might work better than other places. Well, what I don't talk about too much, I'm, I'm sorry to say, is the price because the Justice Department doesn't like trade associations to talk about price, but Mark can talk to you a little bit more about price. He is one of my uh, representatives from one of my member companies. Um, I have uh, 10 uh, precast pre-stressed concrete producers in the Illinois and Wisconsin region, and they have 13 different plants who manufacture bridge components, wall panels, architectural precast, so any of the very large structural type pieces of, of precast concrete that you would see. So you visited county materials, or many of you, I guess, visited county materials and got to see the bridge side of things. Mark's company does architectural precast, and so what they do really is what you see uh, cladding a building and uh, the exterior of, of those types of structures. Do you want to say anything else about hi? Uh, yeah, Marty. Uh, thank you. I should probably get out of the corner here, shouldn't I? Um, yeah, as Marty said, uh, High Concrete is a member of, of PCI. Uh, we've, we've been a member for quite a while. Uh, High has a number of different uh, plant companies. They're actually headquartered in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, uh, in over near Philadelphia area, and they have plants in uh, Denver, Pennsylvania, Lancaster uh, area, Buena, New Jersey. Uh, the plants I work out of primarily in Fishers, Indiana, is just north of Indianapolis. So I'm, I'm a sales and marketing type, and I kind of cover the Indiana area, uh, Illinois, south of Chicago, over to St. Louis, and down into western Kentucky. So I cover a fair amount of ground. But the company, we, uh, uh, the plants that I work out are primarily architectural. Uh, we do have a plant in Paxton, Illinois, kind of just up the road here a little bit. Maybe some of you have driven by that or seen that. Uh, it's currently not, not operating right now because of the economic situation. We're a little bit slow, and we've actually kind of consolidated our Midwest operations in, in a plant in Springboro, Ohio, which is just south of, of Dayton, Ohio. But again, primarily architectural. Um, love to answer some questions about that. Marty's program is going to have a little bit, kind of give you a little bit of a flavor for, for precast, pre-stressed concrete in a number of different areas, a number of different type of product areas. You know, I'd love to comment more a little bit with you on architectural. Maybe when we're done, we can finish up with a question and answer, tell you a little bit about my background, talk about some of the other things that were discussed, maybe cost estimating, how we get involved in, in these projects, working with um, and I call on every, everybody from construction managers to general contractors to architects to developers. So I see a lot of different types of things. A lot of people have a lot of different concerns, and, and maybe we can address some of that as well. So glad to be here with you tonight. All right. So um, what I'm going to do is start by talking about some of the really cool things that you can do with uh, precast concrete. And very scientifically, I picked seven of my favorite projects, and I'm calling them the seven wonders of the precast world. And um, they're either wonderful to me because of the beauty of the, the product, or just the technology of the product and, and their ability to do some things with uh, the engineering and uh, the, the way that they've put the pieces together. This is called the Baha'i Temple. It's up in Wilmette, just on the north shore of Chicago. And it was built um, in the, started in the early 1920s and it uh, finished with the precast portion of it, 1934, although it wasn't completed until 1950. So I don't know that any of you will probably work on a project that will take quite that long to complete. But this is when precast concrete was really in its infancy. And, uh, you know, as an industry, we think of ourselves as being about 50 years old. And so this was even really before there was a precast industry. But uh, the precaster was actually out of New York. And he created all of these forms first out of plaster and had somebody come in and sculpt all those plaster pieces and then they placed the concrete over that and it mirrored the the plaster pieces and they created this beautiful um, 
temple with a lot of architectural detail on it. Not quite as beautiful, but I think still quite a wonderful project is the channel. Um, just the technology that allows us to go underneath the ocean and um, connect England to France. They actually used two different types of precast pieces on the channel. So on the French side, um, they used um, they used one type of, of piece, and on the English side, they used another. But they were both um, connected pieces. They just have tunnel lining components that were then grouted and bolted into place. And um, you know, takes you through. This gives you kind of a really nice idea of, of all of the different pieces that created the channel. The Sunshine Skyway Bridge is in Tampa, and that is a five and a half mile long bridge. And again, it uses uh, this cable stay uh, main section, and then it also has segmental pieces of precasts that are then connected together. And um, it remains one of the longest segmental precast bridges out there. And I love this project for two reasons. One is the technology that allowed them to do it and that it's such a wonderful engineering feat. And the second reason I love it is it's, it's a beautiful structure. So there was a lot of, of beauty that went into it as well. And they were replacing an existing bridge. Um, this is a project in Rome called the Jubilee Church. And I was actually showing this to some students on Monday night, and they said, oh, we just went to Rome last semester and went to visit this church. And they said that the pictures don't even begin to do it justice. But um, there's a couple things that are really remarkable about this project. One is the shape of the architectural precast. Most of the time when you think about concrete walls, you're thinking really in terms of very straight lines. But with architectural precast, you really start to have that ability to take on different shapes and uh, different looks to the structure. The other thing about this is that uh, Richard Meyer, who's an American architect who designed this, really loves two things. He loves the bright white that you can get um, and he loves to design white buildings and thinks that uh, you know they bring a lot to his designs. And then he loves to bring light into his structures. And he managed to do that by, again, having that very reflective white material. They use white cement, but then they also used an admixture in this that is a carbon dioxide inhibitor. So it's a self-cleaning concrete that actually uh, takes carbon dioxide from the air and, and is also a cleaner way of building. Um, very similar in some ways, but um, a, a little earlier project is the Sydney Opera House. And um, this was designed in the early 1960s by a Danish architect called uh, Jorn Utzen. Um, and when he designed it, the technology was not available to actually build it. So it took them so long to figure out how they were actually going to build it. And what actually happened was he finally had this brainstorm that if he repeated the same radius for all of those different um, stems of the seashell, kind of, um, he would be able to do it out of precast concrete. And it's actually one of the earliest examples of a building that used computer-aided design. Very rudimentary computer-aided design, but, uh, but one of the first projects. 